I'm Peggy Farron and we are live with the Understand Photography Show where we talk about travel, nature, and fine art photography. Welcome to episode number 71. We are broadcasting this live on Facebook, hence a little bit of a technical glitch to get started. <laughs> live is tough. Anyway, after the show, we put the recording on YouTube and also on iTunes as a podcast. So just do a search either on YouTube or iTunes for the Understand Photography Show and please subscribe, listen, watch, make comments, review us, whatever you can do. It really, really helps us a lot. Um, uh, my s short commercials. Our next four weeks to proficiency in photography class starts February 8th on my birthday. Anyway, um, that is an online class, but it's live. So you have a teacher, that's me, that is going to be there. So you can, we're going to show you a PowerPoint and show you, you know, how to change the settings, why you change the settings, but then I'm right there so that I can help you if you have questions, okay? So that's a four-week class. You're going to get a good foundation in photography. You're going to learn how to shoot in manual. Um, you're going to learn about metering modes and drive modes and white balance and also a little bit about flash photography. Um, also online, we have some not live classes, but the most popular, we have software classes mostly. Joe Fitzpatrick put together two really good classes on Lightroom. The first one is called Getting Started with Lightroom, and the second one is all about the catalogs and collections and folders because Lightroom can get confusing. The way We also have a Photoshop, getting started with Photoshop and getting started with Photoshop Elements class. But the way our software classes are is they're very, very short videos, like two to ten, not even ten minutes, two to six minute long videos. So we teach you a little, you can try it, and then you can go to the next video, try it, and you go at your own pace. So it's really, really good. So those are on our understandphotography.com website. Our trips for this year are pretty much all sold out. Our Everglades trip is sold out. Our Apalachicola trip is sold out. You can, you know, contact us if you'd like to be put on the waiting list because sometimes things happen. Our Ladies Weekend, May 4th through the 6th here in Naples, Florida, is not sold out, so hopefully you can make it to that. And then I'm also planning a ladies-only trip to Cuba in January or February of 2019, so stay tuned. But we do have day trips, okay? We, we have day trips from Naples, Florida. February 1st, we've got Sarasota. February 17th is Everglades. March 20th and May 23rd, we're going to do Burrowing Owls and Matt Lachey. So anyway, just check out our schedule, understandphotography.com. Today, my guest is creative portrait and fine art photography photographer Mila Bridger. Welcome Hi, Mila. Peggy. Now Mila is an artist. Even though you're a portrait photographer, you do a lot of everything, but I know you as both, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. That's true. We met at the event. Yeah, we met. We both do an event yeah. photography. She helped me out. I had a terrible headache and she had ibuprofen. It's from <laughs> Poland. They are the best. Really? I had ibuprofen from I Poland? I only take ibuprofen from Poland. I didn't even know I had imported drugs. Right. <laughs> you have to have someone bring it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was quite a few years ago, though, right? It was quite a few years. And then I think we met at I've some seen you. older event again. Yeah, I've seen you. I've seen you many times. Headache free. Headache free. It, you didn't have a headache since then, right? <laughs> that day was tough, man. It's hard to work when you have you a know, bad headache, so as you know. So now, how long have you been a photographer? Well, uh, I started when I was seven, ah. but then it was it was just a hobby for a long time. So I want to say maybe um, fifteen years now. Wow! And now you're from Poland. Yep. And how did you end up here in the United States? Well, first I moved to Canada. Okay. And I was a wedding photographer there, and then I couldn't take the winter anymore. It's terrible there. Well, Poland is cold. Not that cold. <laughs> no, no. Not that cold. No. <laughs> well, we have a Seattle weather, like where I was born. Oh. It's cold. It's not cold. It's just rainy and gray and nasty. I went to winter. Ireland this year. Yeah, and that's similar, what Ireland's like, similar. right? Okay. South might have snow, but less and less right oh, now. The climate okay. changes. Okay. So you went to Canada, and then you ended up... And you were a wedding photographer. Mm -hmm. Do you do weddings now? No, no. There was, 
There was a moment, and I knew it's going to come, when I will stop liking it. I had a blast in Canada. The, the, the brides were always super nice. I, I enjoyed it. And I knew if there will be a moment when I don't enjoy shooting weddings, I immediately quit. And I quit. Wow. When I came here. <laughs> okay. Yeah, because I've never known you to do weddings. No. I like doing weddings, but the, as I get older, They're they hard. get hard on my yeah. body. <laughs> yeah. True. I don't think people realize that we start at 1.30 or 2 o'clock in the oh, even afternoon. Earlier. And then we oh, work until 11 at night. Mm -hmm. It's a long, long day with a lot of carrying, heavy I, equipment. I used to have migraines after crazy migraines. Well, now I do the neck. Epsom salt baths when I get home. <laughs> <laughs> So now what, like what pushed you, did you start off just, like for me I started off as a portrait photographer and that's it and then as I got older I started getting more interested in trying to get some fine art photography. Was that kind of what happened to you? Or? Well I've always been interested in like, uh, um, in art. Okay. And masterpieces. My mother is a uh, historian of art. Oh. And she's a curator of a modern art section in the museum. Oh my gosh. Poland. So I grew up with, with, with yeah. art, with books of art, masterpieces. Uh, when I was little and I would scream, my mom would just open the uh, illustrated encyclopedia of art with the Infanta Margarita by Velasquez. That was my favorite painting. Oh and I would just immediately will shut up. Wow. And since so then, till then, till now, I love it. So now, how did you get your vision for the, well your art changes all the time because I've been watching you for a while. <laughs> Depends on my moods I yeah. guess. <laughs> I mean did you because right now I think a lot of what you do is you take a portrait and you and you bizarre it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That is a I was looking for the words. Bizarre. <laughs> now what? <laughs> like, twist it. Twist it. Yeah, yeah that's better. <laughs> I like bizarre it out. So. So, like, what, what, did you have something, like, that drove you to, like, did, were you just thinking, you're like, and I think it'd be cool to put somebody, yeah. I don't I know. Just, I don't know, it just comes out of my head. Just Literally, comes out of your head. It comes out of my head, and sometimes I have a dream. I dream a lot. Like, I have crazy dreams. And I have my phone right next to my bed so I can write my notes right oh, away. Oh, that's so just to smart. Just keep it, because it's like one minute later, and it's, it's gone. So now how do you take it from that idea to fruition? How does it happen? Like then I write it down and if there's something really visible, that the idea is really visible, uh, I'm like, okay, I have to do it. And then I start collecting uh, props, make it happen, getting a model, thinking of location, setting everything up, and then it's... And then you just it do comes it. Out. And then it's like, whew, yes. Now, does sometimes though the whole vision's not there? Is it just sort of? Um, there's always a vision here, but sometimes it doesn't translate what I see. <laughs> that happens uh -huh. to me all the time. <laughs> I have all these brilliant ideas know, for right? pictures, and then they're like, okay, it that not didn't look work. Right. I don't know, is the light wrong? What did I do wrong here? <laughs> no, um, but then um, you twist it a little, you change it a little, and, and, and it's still good. Because nobody else knows it. It's, it's it's just you. So you're like, okay, I'll let it. So now, when you're working a with a model, do you do you hire them or do they do it for free? How does that work? Sometimes I hire. Sometimes we collaborate. Okay, and how how patient are they with you while you're coming up <laughs> with your crazy ideas? <laughs> uh, they are patient during the shoot. I hear later that they suffered through. <laughs> I but they don't. They don't complain. They don't complain. They're awesome. Even when you pour paint over their heads. They are awesome. Yeah, they don't. They tell you later. Now Although, what? like that was Cesar Aguilera. That I pour the paint on. Oh, okay. I know that him. Was, he's a uh, his portrait. Yeah, he's a he's a uh, fellow photographer in town. <gasps> no, he's, he's not. Cesar Aguilera is an amazing artist. He's oh, who a, am I thinking of? He's not no, a photography Cesar, artist. Cesar does. He's the pioneer the wearable art, he makes uh, jewelry out of the computer parts, and he's an amazing painter. He's hmm. in for my I wonder who I'm thinking of. Anyway. But uh, it's hard to tell because he's got a paint yeah, all over him. Yeah, you don't know him. who's... But he, he was actually, the paint was dripping through his nose, and 
over his mouth and I was telling him to not move and uh, I guess he couldn't breathe. Oh, so you're <laughs> breathing, you know. <laughs> what do you need when breathing for? <laughs> <laughs> when we walk him out to like hose wash him with that paint, he's like, what yeah, kind of I paint was that? I think that was one of his paints, so I don't know. Did it come off? Yeah, it did. Eventually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think about the stuff later. I, like, like, I would think about, about that before somebody photo, let right? somebody pour paint over my head. <laughs> I, you really don't think the consequence. <laughs> you just want to make it happen. So how long does it take for you to set up a, sh a, a photo shoot like that? And then how long does it take to do the Okay, so shoot? when there is an idea, then you collect the props and it depends on what is it happening okay, when I so collecting the props probably is building a set because I build everything okay there's there's no digital manipulation later okay I don't do that okay uh, so everything I see it has to be that's what's gonna be on the photo okay after um, so yes let me give you an example when we shot this creative portrait of the writer uh -huh. she's I had this image in my head that she's gonna sit on a giant chair made of pages, okay. books. So it literally took us two weeks to build a wall of pages. Oh my god! And that wall is right behind her and she's got this big red chair and there is a floor with pages and there's this book stack and there is an old typewriter and the pages are spitting out of the, like a fountain. And how did you make that happen? Glue. Glue, wow. a lot of glue. And this pi is one of the pictures you sent me, right? I think so. So this yeah. is going to be on understandphotography.com in the show notes. We dragged it all to the beach. So you built the set. Yeah. Do you have a truck? Mm, I have an SUV. SUV? That's usually Does like everything fit in your SUV? It did actually fit in, yeah. And so do you have helpers? I do. Who helps you? We usually, when we talk and with the clients, and they're collaborators yeah. more than anything, because you're not paying these people. Some usually. of them I do. Like Sometimes. if I really, I don't have anybody who wants to come and hang out at the shoot, and you have then to you hire have to someone. someone. Yeah. Okay, I'm just curious because yeah. you're you're single, right? Yeah. Like I no, am. No, I'm not. Oh, you're not single. <laughs> no. Oh, I thought you were. But anyway, no, I, that that I get help but sometimes. I don't, but I mean, I, it's like all the time people are like, "I did this, my husband and I and my wife and I." I'm like, "I wish I had a, some like a plus one that would help well, me do know, stuff for free." <laughs> you know, they everybody. <laughs> those are clients. Those are those are commission mm -hmm. photos. So they usually come with with their husbands or with someone else. Okay. So we always put them all to work. Good for you. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and that was that was a tough one because it was so windy on the beach and we had to have actually s we pulled someone walking on the beach and asked him to just stand behind the wall like oh you're kidding yeah, me you just grabbed the wall somebody was from the beach smoke. yeah that is so funny so can you just like you want to stand there and watch it just stand behind that wall right now <laughs> so how long did that shoot take it, it those are quick the ones on the beach are really quick because I have this one location mm -hmm. and it's right at the sunrise sunrise yeah Ooh. it's tough yeah, yeah. <laughs> otherwise there's too many people on the beach but though the right the light the light's pretty the light is beautiful and you're not shooting against the mm -hmm. sun like and we do at sunset you get the sand and the ocean and the and the sky comes to like this grayish blend mm -hmm. so the subject pops out of it okay and you kick a little light on it and and you're really good with lighting. Oh, I, I think I have a lot of to learn about now, lights. Now, what kind of light do you use? Do you I use just upgraded to Profoto. Profoto? I'm so in love with it. What were you using before? Uh, the, the buff, what's his name? Paul C. Paul buff. C. buff. Like the Still just have him. The, like the alien bees. The alien bees. Because they are pink. I have alien bees. I love Somewhere alien bees. In here. They are great. I do too. They're little. They're great. <laughs> but, but now I've got the um, Godax because it's smaller. That's what I did with Profoto. I, I just wanted, I tested it, and I like, oh, this is so good, and they're so portable. And do they have their own triggers that come yeah. with them? Mm -hmm. And are they, but they're not TTL, right? They're all manual flashes? They are both. You can do They TT. do both. That's what the, that's what the Godax does, mm -hmm. that's why. But I haven't mastered the TTL yet, because I'm not tail. used to using off-camera light with yeah. TTL. I'm used to using it in manual, so I'm still. I shoot manual on this, I'm too. still struggling with that. They so. have a high-speed sync. 
That's why, that's another reason I got the, the Godex, Godex too. <laughs> should look into that. <laughs> we should go practice together. Yes, totally. <laughs> Let's figure out some, some crazy epic. Logo. Now, so this writer, this was a commissioned job. Yeah. So how did she find out about you? Was, uh, it, was it a she? You said she, she right? Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, she's a local writer. She writes kids' books. Okay, Lee cool. Naples. Um, and she just she heard learned of you? from another creative portrait I did of Veron Ennis. She's a she's a fantastic artist. She moved now to Virginia, but okay. she was here in Fort Myers. Um, abstract artist, painter. Uh, so I did a creative portrait of her, and she saw it. And she wanted something like that. That is so cool. Now, how do you come up? Don't tell me how much you charge her, but tell, tell me, how do you come up with a price for something like that? That's, that's got to be hard. That's the worst question. <laughs> so <laughs> hard. Yes. Well, you know, that's how I became such close friends with Charlie. I got this job. What should I price it? And we would talk <laughs> about it. Can I call it you and, next time? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can feel for free because now I've got one of my subcontractors. She's constantly calling me. Just, you know, it's she's so got hard. all the... It, pricing is hard to it's come so up with. It's so hard because, you know what, this is like we do what we love. But How you gotta you make a, a living. Price on that? Yeah. But you gotta well, you make have a living. To, yeah. You know. But yes. You yeah. don't want to be a starving artist. Well, it's I've got my hour base. Great. Mm -hmm. And then whatever whatever props we need to buy, we need to make. This all comes as extra cost. Okay. And then there is a, if there is a lot of retouching, there's another. So do you? Do you put a proposal to them? Is that what you do? You say, I yep. think this is what the, mm -hmm, the cost mm -hmm, is going to yes. be. Mm -hmm. But then you chart, you bill them actual for the cost, or do you? They get a final, final a invoice bit. at the end of the shoot. Okay. Yeah. Okay. This is like approximate. This is what it should look like, and um, there's a there's like if there's, I don't charge for like the basic retouching, but if they say like, hey, can can you make me skinner? <laughs> All right. <laughs> yep, I do the same thing. <laughs> Because it's and like, I, yeah, I, don't I mean, like I'll smooth it. out your skin yeah, and get rid of the hair, the flyaway yeah. hairs. But if you want me to put this head on a different picture, you're paying for that. <laughs> <laughs> well, can uh, we can we put my husband here? He wasn't at the shoot. <laughs> like, no. I actually have a job today, tom tomorrow, like that. This, my sister can't make it. Can we just put her in there later? And I'm like. If you give me a high quality, the problem is that they the don't realize yeah. is they need to get a professional photographer in the other area yeah. to give me a professional picture with the same lighting exactly. to put you into a group. But That's so hard to match. Yeah. So that was an exciting job. Do you do a lot of commission stuff like that or some? Um, you do a lot of everything, don't yeah. you? Yeah, so do I. I think that's kind of the way photography. Exactly. It's like it's everybody says to niche, 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 but I did the opposite. I was niching, and then when everything kind of changed in 2009, 2010, that's when I became more of a general photographer. But it's it's all like in the same. Yeah, it's pool. all photography. It's like it's, I mean, I can't do I can't do landscapes. I can't. Oh, in You don't want to? You mean? I I just yeah. This is like you and see I love landscapes but what doesn't interest me are birds and yeah. so many people down here love bird photography and I that's great. I keep trying to like it and it's like it's a bird <laughs> it is a bird you know? I just this is like boring I don't know it's I just don't to you see to them it. they get so excited you know I like to have someone I can interact and mold them you can't just tell the bird, like, look at me right here, right? No, the no. bird does what no. they want. But that's, oh, rock. to them, to bird photographers, that's the challenge. They they learn the behavior, and they know what's going to, they know what the sign is that the bird's going to take off. Patience, oh. that's what I don't have. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. That's probably why the bird photographer doesn't <laughs> interest me. I just realized that. Jeez. So now, okay, the the model with the hair wrapped across their face. That was you? That was me. And how did you, first of all, did, was that just to come up in a dream? Mm-hmm. And then I just, you hired somebody to help you with that? I collaborated with a hairdresser. She's a fantastic hairdresser. Uh, and I say, listen, I need a portrait of myself. Can we do like a, a, a blind out of my hair so you don't really see my face? I didn't even know it was you. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. <laughs> um, that was
was one was for the ad, one was for my solo show, and the third one was uh, Golf Show Life magazine asked me to do a s self portrait. So like, I hate doing those. I don't oh, like shooting you're myself. So good at it. I don't like shooting myself. Mine are so boring. Here's my picture of me with a camera in my hand. Yours are like way I over the top, like wild. <laughs> just put a hair in front of my face. That's so, so cute. Nobody will know who I am. And you said, uh, so how did she put it together? Did she? I had it? the I had the longer hair at the time, so it and was so easy for her to actually wrap it around and pin it. There was a lot of pinning in the back. Oh my god! That's yeah, so and fun. a lot of hairspray. And then who took the picture? It was the remote. Ah! <laughs> That's so funny, jeez. Now, let's talk about this. Now, you make a living. You're a full-time photographer, yep. okay? Um, but you make a little bit of money in this, a little bit of money in that, all photography related. Yes, yes. Those are events. There's portraits. Events, creative portraits. portraits. And I sell just, but that's not even that's just starting. I'm trying to figure out what sells. Okay. Well, that's actually, I forgot to do my commercial for it. We have a workshop, full day <laughs> workshop coming up here in Naples, Florida called Selling Your Photography as Art. I want to sign up. And we have Carolyn Edlund. She's an art business consultant. She's coming to the studio. She came last year in February too. We sold out. But she helps you put the portfolio together, all that kind of stuff. Like this is not, shouldn't be in your portfolio. This should be whatever. But then she also goes through like, how do you get into art galleries? How do you wholesale your work? You know, just goes into mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that most people just don't have a clue on how to get involved in the art world. I'll tell you what, though, you living here, the I don't know much about the Marco Island Art Center, but the Naples Art Center is very, very active in they helping are. their their yeah. artists. There's um, a lot of lot calls for artists. The Naples Art Association, we're talking. Yeah. Yeah, they they do lots of the exhibits every month. Yep, they have and those. They have the Art in the Park series, yeah. which is really good. But that's, you know, the fastest way to make a living selling art is by doing art shows. But it's also tough. You have to get a tent, and you have to qualify, and you have all the other stuff. So it's like, do you really want to be given up every Saturday to sit in the tent? Mm -hmm. But it's a, it's a fast way to make money as an artist I've learned. Yeah. One I of the fastest ways. I'm very fortunate I have a, a girlfriend in Miami who owns a gallery and oh. every year she really takes me by my hand and takes me and drags me to our Basel and we oh. walk through the Art Basel and, and a few years ago when I had all those gas masks <laughs> serious. Oh yeah, I remember your walk gas out, mask we walk out we walk out of the art center or the, the convention center and she's like, What did you learn? Did you see any gas mask? <laughs> I'm like, no. So don't. She didn't like your gas masks? Well, she's like, it won't sell. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, they hang in my kitchen. <laughs> I like it. You I have a sell. collection of gas masks, right? I do. I collect gas masks, and right now I customize them. They have one has like a bunch of diamonds all over it. Oh, my gosh. The other one has like daisies. The other one has plastic peppers, red peppers and yellow peppers. <laughs> I'm like, if you want to wear a gas mask, why don't you want to like wear, wear in a style. nice one? Exactly. Right? I mean, come on. Oh, come on. Like, I like, mean, come like on. everything. <laughs> Whatever you wear, you want to wear it nice. <laughs> Have a fun gas mask. Now, you are in the local media a lot, all right? I don't think so. No? no. I mean, you get pretty big spreads. I about Mila Bridge, or you have your own shows. I mean, tell us about your career as a fine over art over the years. Is there's that why? Because I've been around once, too long. <laughs> once a year, there's something. Um, I had the I had a solo show last year. And it was it was it went out of proportion. It was big. The turnout of the reception party was crazy. Okay, so tell me about that. Let's start from the beginning. So you had a one man show. One woman show. It was where was it? Where was it? It was at the Art Center in Fort Myers. Sydney that and burn. Davis. Yeah. What's Sydney, it called? Sydney and Davis Bernie Art Center. That doesn't Davis. sound right. Sydney and Bernie Sydney. Davis. Okay. Sydney and Bernie <laughs> Davis. Sydney and Bernie Davis Art Center. Yeah. Which is a huge place. It is a huge place. It used to be the federal building. It was. It was a post office. It was a post office. Or I'm prison. It was, it was a, a federal building. I knew and it was I the federal building, but I didn't before know. Before the that, there was a. 
I don't know, maybe it's just a, a spooky story. There was a prison there, I too. I heard that. Uh, uh, but yeah, it was a post But it's a huge building. It's big. And it's a big, they've got a great art center there. So you had a one-woman show. Yes. So how did you get that show in the first place? Well, do they have membership there? Is that they it's like do. an association like it is for they the They do, Earth? but they also like they have. Um, they actually approached me, and they were. It was like two years ahead. The the calendar is filling up so crazy. Wow. So you need to sign up if you want to have a show. And we've been talking about it because I've been working with them a little. And they say, "Well, have you thought about solo show?" And uh, I'm like. And so, how did they know who you were? I and how were you talking with them? I knew them through. Um, I used to live right downtown for Myers. My oh, studio yeah. was there, and I would do some events for them. Okay. But I will. Oh, every year they started this event called Cooking for the Arts. Cooking for the arts, and it's they raise money for the kids. There's a room that uh, educational room for kids, so okay. they can come and learn, play music or paint. Um, I will donate every year a piece, and I will make that piece based on a masterpiece. Okay. So first year we did the Last Supper. Okay. And it was all people from Fort Myers, downtown Fort Myers art scene. We had uh, Eric Radatz, the film mm -hmm. festival. Uh, we had Terry Tichner, the gallery owner. We had uh, Maria Pia, the Italian fashion designer. Cesar Aguilera, the painter. David Acevedo, painter. Xavier Brignoni, Pam Beckman, the event planner. Everybody from Fort Myers. Okay. And you made, you recreated And the we recreated supper? it totally recreated it but instead of like food each mm -hmm. of them had their own tool of m whatever they use oh, oh their like artist, artist painter yeah. paint brush so they are like mixing eggs but they are not mixing eggs they have a, a yellow paint in a bowl oh my god at the event planner is squeezing grapes into a bottle like oh, how so like funny. happening and and there's Stephanie Davis and Eric they are like interviewing each other <laughs> so that was a big piece and we framed it and we gave it to uh, to art center for the auction and actually um, Bernie Davis bought it wow and she, like, yeah. and she donated back to the art center so is it still it's hanging there, there? Yeah. Oh my it's God, right I gotta go see it. I haven't been there in a long time. It's in that mezzanine room. Oh my God, that is so cool. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, so you were, you were, you knew them because, like me, I, I do the events. I photograph mm -hmm. the events at the Naples Art Association. Not all of them, but some of them. And so that's how I know them. And then I became a judge for Art in the Park. And so even though I'm not active as an artist there, I'm active there. Did that make sense? Yeah. And it sounds like similar mm -hmm. to what, and so then, did they ask you to donate the piece for that? Or uh, did you, how'd you? I don't remember, but it was just but like. But somehow you knew about out. it and you said, yeah. I have this idea. Yeah, and they were, actually, they, I think they were trying to get artists to donate things. Okay. Uh, it was mostly artists. And so. how'd you come up with, so you knew it was a food-based thing. And oh, because it was Italian theme, because cooking for the arts, they oh, had this Italian okay. cooking. Okay. So I'm like, hmm. so you were gonna take let's a just, famous Italian let's just take painting? It, yeah, let's take Da Vinci and. Oh my gosh! That but I is always so want to cool. reenact the Last Supper, like in a crazy way. And you did. I still want it. I still want to go more. You want to do another one? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> you could have a Last Supper series <laughs> <laughs> with different like groups of people. <laughs> but that was brilliant to get the people who were involved. Yeah. That was smart. Not just. I mean, that was smart from a networking angle, because that's the other thing about selling your art. It's, it's, it's word of mouth. It's all who yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. It is. It really is. So that's true. But that, like that was Fort brilliant. Myers is such a, it's such a neat community over there. Everybody knows each other, and everybody's like super nice. They are, there's, there's no jealousy. There's no, like everybody tries to help each other and collaborate. Wow. They are really awesome there. Yet you moved away. I know. I <laughs> miss them so much. But you mostly friends. work in Naples, don't you? I do. Yeah. So you know, but you don't ever live in Naples. You live in Marco now. You yeah. Live in that. <laughs> Spectrum. Whatever. Uh, okay. So that 
was a big score for you, even though it was donated. You still got a lot of publicity out of it, right? I, yeah, I guess. And so was... from there, they knew who you were. And then did they say, hey, do you want to have a one-man mm -hmm, show? Mm -hmm. or? Okay. Yeah, they ask, and I'm like, no. Because <laughs> you were scared? I'm like, I don't want to. And I'm like, yes. I'm like, all right. So how long from the time they asked you until I had a happened? year and a half. A year and a half? So and then did you have to just... I had everything to create, new? I had to, I started creating new stuff. So I actually did the whole series of Blue Room sessions. Of what? It's Blue Room. It was a Blue Room. I had, I had half of my apartment studio painted blue. Okay. Then I got the same matching backdrop blue. There was a blue sofa, blue table. And we shot, uh, again, I invited a uh, artists to come over and let's do portrait of each of you. Okay. The Blue Room series. Blue Room series. So there's a lot of them. And yeah. And there was some some previous ones. A okay. lot of creative portraits that I, I have this whole series with the beach. The creative portraits. I remember on your the beach. hairdresser one. That was my first creative was portraits. Was that your on first one? That was yeah. so good where you was that you with the hairdresser? No, that's that was a, somebody else. It's that a was portrait the hairdresser. of a hairdresser. And she's like... And she's balancing on the chair. With a big hairdryer in her hand, yeah, like, like a gun almost. Yeah, so she's like a hairdresser ninja. Ah! She's like, that she's was so awesome. such a cool picture. Thank you. I saw that in a magazine somewhere. You got a bit, lot of press on that, didn't you? I think. Am I imagining it? I don't remember that. <laughs> So you did the, okay, I'm going to go back to the one-man show, one-woman show. Try not to be sexist. Solo show. Trying to be <laughs> solo show. Thank you. Thank you. Solo show. That's a better way to put it. Okay. So you started collecting everything. So this had to be a costly thing for you because I know I've put on a couple shows and it, it was. It, it's expensive. I got some sponsors. I actually send out um, letters to some people that I knew that I like my work uh -huh. and ask them if they can just sponsor me mm -hmm. and then we made the big um, poster with all the logos and names and oh. I had Brian Roland just doing the appetizers that was so awesome he I donated them he donated it wow that was nice he's so nice he is so nice I just worked there at venue Naples his, his I place. think I saw it it was, it was some, my first some, time being there it was beautiful it was on some, Monday like, historical thing yeah the Elizabethan theme yeah. dinner yeah it was fun photo. he uh, he dressed up he and Nicole dressed up <laughs> so funny they're <laughs> so sweet they are very nice people so okay so that's a brilliant idea though yeah. so you just you just hooked up with people you already knew who might sponsor you. And then I would say, like, in return, there will be your logo everywhere. Yeah, that's great. And at the show, did you put, like, posters up with their logos or anything mm -hmm. like that? Uh, they, had, they, they had at the beginning when they walk in, they will be on a display, like an LD screen. Oh, like with, a slideshow? With their infos, and there was also a big thank you. And I also had a band that will an announce thanks to everyone. Ah. And it was a big poster that was hanging up front between those columns when you walk by. Okay. And that's where we put the, the logos of the sponsors, too. Oh, that was a great idea. That was that brilliant. That helped a lot. Well, you know, you know Gareth Radcliffe, right? Yeah. He was on the show, long, I can't remember what episode, it was a long time ago. But he did a Kickstarter campaign. I know, yeah. That was brilliant. I mean, it's so hard to get started. Mm -hmm. as, you know, once you start selling your art, okay, then you can start. But it's hard to get started. So. Oh, yeah, um, okay, so I want to keep talking about <laughs> this because this is so interesting to me. And I think the audience would be interested in this too because I think, you know, I mean, I think people don't realize that having your own show costs a lot of money. It does, and stress. Because I know one of our friends had a, a, a photography show, and I forget, I think he had about 45 pieces, and it cost him, maybe he had more than that. I think it co he said it cost him about either, t I think he said $4,500 to, you know, for framing mm -hmm. and prints. and. And yeah. then, of course, he had a very minor reception. It wasn't a big deal like yours. I was very fortunate with people like Brian Roland donating food and, and appetizers and servers. 
I had oh, uh, wow. I had uh, art center. Was art center donated uh, absent? Wow. We had absent. Wow. Um, <laughs> I had a band that that was happy to play and um, and then you have to think of I was I had to think of like cheapest way because I couldn't like really print on aluminum everything which I would love to and we say aluminum, aluminum. Aluminum, <laughs> aluminum, aluminum just in case somebody didn't catch that word <laughs> so go other ahead. words <laughs> I know I mean, go to <laughs> Europe and they speak English in a different yeah. language <laughs> Okay, um, so so what did you do to come up with I, less expensive ways to? And I really wanted to present it in a different way. I I I, I brainstorm. I actually was in Poland and I visited few exhibits a um, few months before that, and I was like, maybe I'll just like knock them onto those wood pallets. I get wood pallets right, and just uh -huh. knock the photos and just hang it that way. Uh -huh. I'll just hang them from like uh, wires with the pins. Okay. And I'm like, still not. So I found out I can print 30 by 40 and with the, with the mm, foam board in okay. the back. So uh -huh. they are a little thicker. And I had my friend Cesar Aguilera uh -huh. uh, make a mold of my hands. Okay. S so he made molds of my hands and we drilled those hands into the walls and they were literally holding How my cool work. How cool is that? So I, I'm right now at awesome. home, I've got like 50 hands. 50 <laughs> hands? <laughs> <laughs> All over the house. Yeah, that like somewhere. is so cool. That was really cool. And then one hand had, was in the wall holding a business card. It's too oh, oh, yes, of course. That's so cool. What a great idea. I, I love like, that. That was because oh, like we collaborate on that. And he just, I paid him for the materials, wow. whatever that he needed to. Uh -huh. The plaster, plaster or whatever, or whatever. Or I don't know. I know they sell kits like that, but they're probably... He knows the what kit, he's doing. I'm sure, it costs yeah. ten times more than just doing it. Yeah, I'm like, I want like one hand like that, the other one like that, so we could kind of stack the photos in them. That is so cool. Wow. So, they were hands. so then how did you promote the show? Because I know I heard about it. I don't remember how, I, but I, I know I heard a, about it. I had a big it. help from Sue Hoff. Oh, she's so nice. Now, she's a PR lady in town. She's a PR. She's awesome PR. And she just took it over. And just started yes. helping you promote it. And how did she promote it? Do you know? Social media? She was doing social media. She sent out the releases Press everywhere. releases to all the she magazines sends and newspapers. Out everywhere. The TV was talking about it. The radio, the, I mean, it was like coming out. I've got this uh, alert scheduled on my phone that if whatever it's mentioned, my name. Oh, comes yeah, yeah, out. yeah. That's a good idea. And it was like every day, <laughs> solo wow, show. Wow, that is so cool. And I think domino effect on that because it was there. So all the magazines that didn't get a press release will pick it up and, yeah. and say it to Fort Myers scene. It was. And also Art Center, they are really good about it. They are send they good out at promoting? The, mm -hmm, so how many people showed up to your reception? I have no idea. I think it was like 500. Oh my gosh. I seriously don't remember. That's I was crazy. not drunk. I didn't even drink. <laughs> I, it was like art wedding. I don't wow. remember much. Wow. It was just so overwhelming. That's crazy. That's amazing. That's it was, awesome. It now, was did you awesome. sell? Anything? I did. A lot? A I little? Did. A lot? I did. I, I want to say 50%. Wow. We did, the, there was also the closing party, which was like more like an art talk. Okay. And, and so I, wait, I so you open. had a grand, op like a grand opening, a, uh, an opening reception. The reception. Mm -hmm. And then how long was the sh one? Three weeks. The solo show. Three weeks. Three and weeks. And then you had an ending. Mm -hmm. They do that. They what is it called? Ending. It's called art talk. Art talk. With and the artist. So then you talk about the art, basically. Whoever or? comes in can ask questions and. Oh, so it's we not talk. a presentation. You're just there. I'm there, and okay. like, yes, you can do a presentation, but I hate doing that. But you didn't so do it. <laughs> so I was like, I'm just gonna wait till someone asks the question. Okay. And then, yeah. So how much do you think you sold? Did you sell more at the? Uh, the, the reception, the, the, the reception because sold. there were too many people. And so the many closing people. had maybe three more, four more photos. That is so sold. cool. That, that was, was so mind blowing. It was now, 
so from there, you got tons of press, you got your name everywhere. And I so, think that was that was a key point. Yeah, that's a big yeah. that's a big jumping. I mean, that's <laughs> way bigger than I've ever heard any other artist for a for a springboard. You know, that's amazing. So then, what else? What have you done since then to help promote your art? Hmm. Because you have been in the. Maybe you're saying it's not that much, but it seems like you know you get feature articles about you in the big magazines. I. I really w I don't know what I did. I. I mean. That was exactly a year and a half ago, the show. Okay. Um, I did a few more pieces for the Art Center with the Royan acting, the masterpiece, oh, where okay. I invited again everyone in. How fun. The last one we did a little dark, so <laughs> that was the last one. <laughs> it was the anatomy by, um, oh my God, I'm brain dead. I don't know. Let's we that. can look it up and yeah. put it in the show notes. <laughs> <laughs> it's the camera shy. Um, okay, so you, that was the last. You did a couple more of these. Yeah. And then, and then you've had other other shows, smaller I, shows, obviously, because that was a freaking big deal. I didn't. I just focused on making my own work for a while, mm -hmm. and right now I got into a group show in Shangri-La. Okay, so it's and that's in Bonita Springs. Yeah, it's in Bonita. And then I think it lasts for another week or and so. And are you using pieces you already had? Uh, I created a few mil new ones. Okay. I did collaborate in the, with the gallery in Miami. They mm -hmm. asked me for two pieces. Uh, for they had like an auction going on at the Art Basel, at the time when the Art Basel was Ooh, nice. happening. And and there were, those were the new ones, and they sold. Now, what so. do you do with all this art when you're not... Okay, so you obviously you sold a lot of your art at the big it's show. all over the house. But you still had a lot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, <laughs> what do you do with all well, that you stuff? Know, the good I mean, we don't have basements know, in Florida. <laughs> we got those big beds, and that underneath there is... <laughs> is that what you... Because it's like, I'm struggling with storage the all bed. the time, yeah. Um, no, the, I've got a lot of those foam boards photos, with okay. so they are not framed. Oh, okay, so they're easier to store So anyway. they're all like stuck in the box and they are slid underneath the bed. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, I know what I did. I, I answered the call of artists for the uh, Fort Myers, the Alliance for the Arts. Okay. And participated at the airport exhibition. Oh, wow. So they had the call for photographers only. Okay. And it has to be Florida. And the only landscapes I will take a photo of is Cape Romano, the oh, domes. Oh, yeah, you started the Facebook yeah. page at Cape yeah. Romano. Yeah. That's right. I think, I don't know for sure, but I think, no, I knew about it beforehand. But you're the one who made me want to really because go out there. I really want to know, it was 2004, I really want to know what are those, what are those. And that was like before really social media really yeah. was active. So it was really hard to find out. Everybody had photos, but they were like paper photos. Yeah, right. And I had someone calling me and giving me a bunch of photos and I scanned them and I post them because I really wanna, I just wanna know how they look in their prime. Uh -huh. It's so fascinating. And then we had the daughter. So the first time you saw them, 2004? So you yeah. saw them on land. Yeah, they were still on land. Because my son, yeah. you know, my son's a musician. Yes, you said that. And yeah. he did a, he did He's a really uh, good musician. Uh, thank you. I think so. ChrisFerrin.com. Or it, it, the other thing that that comes to his website, you know how you can redirect. You yeah. can have a website domain yeah. that mm -hmm. redirects. Hotguywithglasses.com. <laughs> <laughs> He's so weird. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> But they did a video in 2010, I and it was, still, it was still yeah. on, yes. it was still it was, on it land. Was just slowly crawling into Because it's way out. In fact, did you, have you the been there since the they've lost two no, of the domes after the hurricane? Someone posted a photos right after. Yeah, we went out there just to oh. see, and you yeah, could see the top of them. Yeah, people posting photos to this Facebook page, and I like just reshare them so everyone can see them, because yeah. I, I don't get that much of them anymore. I miss them. Yeah, so that's it's what you awesome. put in the show, though, the Cape Romano. Just one Cape Romano. It's There's only awesome one Cape Romano I had. I love, uh, you take some amazing pictures of Cape Romano. So that's a Facebook <laughs> page called Cape Romano? or You can go to caperomanofl.com and it will redirect you to the Facebook page. Okay. And that's it. 
Okay. Yeah. I love that place too. I love it too. We do There's that. So we do a boat trip on our ladies' trip, May fourth through the sixth, <laughs> two thousand eighteen. Are you guys going to Cape Romano? That's included in the ladies' weekend. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look it we up. We love it. It's so cool. <laughs> so um, you like but get the baskets, lunch baskets with wine and things, or? Well, gosh, I'm slipping. There's no wine involved. <laughs> We do do a picnic, but no, no. wine. <laughs> Bring your own. I guess so. Geez, I, I really gotta gotta get it going here. All right. So so call to artists are a great way for people yes. to get started. Yes. And how do you find out about call to artists? You know that there is actually a website. I oh. think if you Google call for artists, I, I don't remember now, but but it just shows you a whole database of what what's out nation, there na nation, nationwide. Wow. Yeah. For and then you can probably specify photographer or painter or I'll just have to scroll it down. So just we'll just Google yeah. it and find the link. There's so much going on. That's or just awesome. keep following few of the art association places here. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, Naples Art Association has they several things I know. I don't, I'm mean. not as familiar with like, but I know Marco Island. What is it called? Marco Island Center for the Arts? Is that what it's called? Uh, I feel so bad. I don't know. You don't remember either. I don't remember. I think it's called Center for the Arts. They're very but that's, small. But they're an active art center. Bonita has a good art Bonita league. has a one. They are Fort Myers good. Alliance. Is it Fort is Myers it has a Lee few. County Fort or? Myers is at uh, Alliance for the Arts. And then the art center does also, I think once a year they have a call for artists. Once a year they have this jury show when you can send your work and keep it's keep. such a great idea yeah. to be involved in the art association don't give up like the, you get and there's an alliance of all the art centers here that they actually have a building in coconut po point shopping center and they have their own gallery did you know about that no you? i heard about the pop-up galleries at the water it's sites. not pop-up it's permanent gallery you should watch my show sometimes <laughs> <laughs> i listen to you all that's why i'm teasing you <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, I, I can't remember who the guest was that told me about it and had it all about it. Whatever. Anyway, but yeah, there's a, there, is a, there is an art gallery. It's a collaboration. It's, you know, I don't know, I guess is owned the right word by, it's not like Lee County Alliance or Naples. It's the, an umbrella group mm. that has all the art associations. So if you belong to Marco or Naples or Lee County, you can check it out. Submit to become one of the artists at this art gallery. That's really cool. A shared art gallery. There's a name Is for it. Like for some reason, it's co-op. That's the word. <laughs> I'm like, there's a word for it. Co-op. <laughs> well, there's also a co great co-op in Fort Myers. Is there really? Yeah, yeah Das Co-op. Open Das. D A S. D -A -S. D -A -S. D A A two A's. D A A S. Co-op. Yeah. See, I didn't even know about that one. It was, it's been probably two or three years. Brilliant artists open it, David Acevedo and Xavier Brignoni, and, and they invite artists to okay. be there, and they have shows. That's another great way, though, to get your... There's your so much going on. But it sounds to me, when I listen to you, it sounds to me like the main way that you have gotten out there so much is by networking with other artists. Yes. And they are your friends. And then they become friends, and then you help yeah. each other, which is so cool. I love doing that. I love when people help each other. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a happy place. I mean, why? Like, why there's, like, hate or jealousy or... It's awesome. That's it's awesome. So do you have any other tips for if somebody's trying to start out and get their, you know, get their artwork out there? Just don't give up. Just don't give up. There's so many artists, photographers, uh, and everybody right now is an artist, right? Everybody's got a phone with the app. Yeah. <laughs> I have an app called Artisto or yeah, something. <laughs> and my, my photo is going to be transformed into an abstract painting, and I'm going to just submit that right now. <laughs> no, that's, that's the sad part, but I'm um, just... You have to go through that. Just keep trying. Go get out of that pool. Just of, keep moving. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Keep moving and, and keep focusing and keep shooting. And it's going to be hard. I got rejected so many times through the artist calls. Really? Yeah. And do they just send you a little letter? 
I think they don't even, they don't even bother. <laughs> <laughs> You're just waiting and nothing like happens. The first, <laughs> first time was like, why? And you get so, and I'm like, whatever. Um, it's, well, you I know, just keep doing it. at the Naples Art Association, when we judge there, they ask us to write constructive criticism so that the people will, mm -hmm. if they don't oh, get good. in, then hopefully they'll take you to heart. And See, say, that is really nice. It, and it is nice, you it know? It is nice. And that, like, it's hard sometimes because some, some of the stuff is so bad. <laughs> and you're to, like, like put you need to take some classes, <laughs> you know, but you can't <laughs> say that, you know? You have to you just... Did you try painting? <laughs> well, even the painters. I mean, the art, you know, the, the art in the park is for sculptors, yeah, for painters, jewelers, you know, jewelry designers. Um, so do you have to write a criticism for each of them that being rejected? Each, well, any of them, anybody who applies, you wow. have to score them, and then a they ask for, you know, crit critique, nice critique. You know, it's hard. You gotta. Mm -hmm. It's really hard sometimes to say because you can tell so clearly on people who are uneducated about their art. You know, I mean. So you're gonna like really insult them? They think they are. Well, I think a lot of people and photographers included think they can just pick up a paintbrush or a, a camera and take pictures. Oh yeah. But you really do need to know, learn about composition. You need to understand what the rule of thirds is for. You need to understand there needs to be room in front of people in a, in a, or not people, but anybody, anything. It's in paintings more than anything that we see it where they, they'll have a profile of a, a person and they'll be like right up against the, their face will be too close to the side of the picture. And it just looks bad. I mean, just learn that that needs to, there needs to be mm -hmm. room in front. Learn that the eyes need to be, you know what I mean? And then you can break rules. Yes, once but you get the But when we're judging, basis. it's clear on the people who are, who are not schooled. It's really, like, it's like in your face. This person needs to take some classes. And so how do you say that to somebody in a nice way that you are really got a long way to go? To this <laughs> class. <laughs> By the way, we're offering discounts to this class right yeah. now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. sign up. Understandphotography.com, composition Check class. Check my website. <laughs> <laughs> that can be my critique on every, yeah. Just do the stamp. I don't think I'll be judging much longer <laughs> if I do that. So now where can we find you and your beautiful work so um, people can, we're going to put a few pictures on the understandphotography.com mm -hmm. site on the sh in the show notes, but where can they look at your portfolio? Do you have a website? I do have a website. It's milabridger.com. Milabridger.com. And there is also Instagram, Mila Bridger. Okay. Uh, no, and Facebook. Um, Facebook page is Mila Bridger Photography, but that's... Uh, you, don't, you don't populate it as much. It doesn't go... I, you know what I do, and my son says, he's very, very, like, thinks this is a terrible thing to do, but my Instagram, I put it on Facebook as well. Mine goes too, but mine is link, mine is business account, so it goes to my Facebook page. page. Oh, you're right, and mine does too. it never goes there. You're right. It just never shows up there. Oh, it doesn't even no, show up. Mine doesn't always, so yeah. that's a, that's a, we'll have to figure that out too. <laughs> <I know. laughs> Let's get a class about it. Okay, MilaBridger.com. Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you so much for being Thank on the you, show. Thank you, Wasn't too scary, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's not answering. <laughs> <laughs> so remember to check out the show notes, understandphotography.com. You'll see up at the top it says the Understand Photography Show, and so you can look at past episodes or future episodes. It'll say live show schedule or something like that. It'll give you a list of all the guests we've had because this is episode number 71. We've been doing this for 71 weeks. It's amazing. <laughs> Oh, oh, boy, and I fought this. I was like, I don't want to do this. It's too much work, and it is a lot of work, but it's fun, too. It's fun. So, yeah. You have fun. Yeah. Like, like, really, it was fun. Oh, so next week on the Understand Photography Show, my guest is going to be French photographer Serge Ramelli. He's quite quite an accomplished photographer. He's got, I check, I'm checking him out. He's got like 450,000 subscribers on his YouTube channel. He's amazing, amazing. So um, be sure to watch that show. That'll be episode number 72. One more commercial that I almost forgot, because Joe Fitzpatrick, who's right there, is the president of the Florida Camera Club Council, which is the statewide group of all the camera clubs in Florida. Um, the FCCC is our nickname for the Florida Camera Club Council. 
The FCCC is putting on a statewide conference March 9th through 11th in Fort Myers, Florida. It's going to be at Gulf Coast, Florida Gulf Coast University. And it is a very, very well put together conference. Uh, they did it last year and then two years before that. Now they've changed to every year because it's such a popular conference. We get amazing big name speakers. They have two keynote speakers this year. Uh, one is Parrish Kohanim, and if you if you want to, do you know who he is, Mila? Parrish Kohanim, you got to look up his website. You will love his work. I will do that. He's amazing. He's a fine art portrait photographer, so he's not quite as quirky as you are. <laughs> but he takes people and makes them into art. And then the other one is the bird photographer Maxis Gamas. So that is their website is f. 3c.org. So check that out. Come to the conference. I'll be speaking there too. Um, and so we will see you here on the Understand Photography Facebook page next Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Or again, you can watch the recordings on YouTube or listen to the podcast on iTunes. I'm Peggy Farron. Thank you so much for watching episode 71. We'll see you next week. Thank you for watching the Understand Photography show. It would help us immensely if you would click like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.